And uh, actually, that brings us beautifully onto my next question, which is, do you have any tips for dealing with creators' blocks? How do you keep going when you're feeling stuck? And how yeah. do you pull yourself out of a creative rut, for example? Sure. So there's, there's a few things that I do. I think one of the things that I do that sometimes helps a lot, um, especially because like I'm a dungeon master who like rarely gets a chance to be a player sometimes. So I'll, in a way, like sort of imagine myself as some kind of explorer in my own world and really just let that story roll, you know, and um, like a thought exercise like that, you end up creating like whatever your mind runs across, like it's low stakes, you don't have to turn it into an article or, you know, canonize it in any way, or you come up with something super cool that becomes an NPC or a race or a plot line or something. So I guess like experiencing your world kind of firsthand the way that you want other people to experience it helps a lot. Um, and I do that. It's usually something like I'll do at night and kind of fall asleep too, you know, and then wake up the next morning and say, was that worth doing? Is that, should I turn that into something, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of the, the primary way that I get through um, some writer's block. Otherwise, um, having a hobby helps a lot. And the more that I get into role playing, I don't think that, um, or into world building, but I don't think that world building fulfills that, um, that hobby niche in a traditional way because of the amount of time that it takes and the dedication and the passion that's kind of attached there. It's not necessarily the thing you can do to like relax sometimes, you know? So like you need like low stakes stuff, like a, like a card game, a video game, a favorite show, um, you know, anything like for me like I mess around with like you know transformer toys sometimes I'll, I'll do that uh me and Baron were having a conversation about that too just having something that's not attached to world building that you can give your mind like a break but world builders are the kind of people that need like a substantive sort of hobby so it's got to be something with some depth you know um and that's why I'll get into like you know, with my Transformers doing like little photo shoots or making like a little like comic or something, or I'll jump into a card game like Magic or something else, you know, and um, that kind of stuff helps. It's also inspirational sometimes, but it's like, it's very low stakes and yet there's depth there that you can kind of enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting because a lot of world builders, they're building for projects, which yeah. they take very seriously. Right. So even if they're not writing to be published, although I think many of us are, the world building part then becomes associated with this thing that we take very seriously. And the same, um, particularly as the RPG world becomes this sort of very semi-professional space where a lot of people, yeah. you know, they started out as GMs, but now actually they're world building because they're turning out setting books or they're world building because they want to turn out content on um, as adventure modules or they want to do live streams. Yeah. So and suddenly think, this becomes um, this much more professional space. And then it's really hard to, to it is hard. clock it's out. Hard to, to do that. Um, like, for example, with, with Iron Rise, the world of Spiro, you know, that was one that started for us as just like a custom RPG world that me and all my players, we were playing in, right? And then, you know, we, we decided, hey, let's make a board game. Let's do this for real, you know? And as we started developing that, it became like less and less enjoyable for me to also write like our weekly game in that world, you know? Um, it just felt more and more like work. So that's kind of when I developed Ty uh, Tyros and we jumped into like doing more traditional fantasy stuff. And that became kind of the, the fun thing that I could develop. Whereas Iron Rise, sometimes fun, sometimes very serious, hard work that's not fun. Um, and the last thing, you know, I wanted to do sometimes was spend like two or three hours cranking out an adventure than to put everybody at the table and do another four or five hours, you know. So um, I, ultimately, that's why world building is sometimes not what you want to rely on for your hobby, you know, for your relaxation. Yeah, not that it's not awesome, but it's not really it is. Uh, relaxing. It's super awesome. It's just for me falls into that category of like passion work, you know, as opposed yeah. to relaxation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's interesting what you said about um, with regard to getting through a creator's block, that sometimes yeah. you will explore your world from the first person. I think one For of sure. the best piece of advices 
best piece of advice is. That was a very Dutch approach to a sentence, sorry. <laughs> One of the best pieces of advice I was ever given. Um, uh, Actually, this is sort of a two-pronged one. Uh, the one came from Devon Rue, who said that when mm -hmm. she's making maps, she'll often explore them in the first person as she's going yeah. through. So she'll sort of name the towns and imagine what the landscape looks like as she walks the roads in her mind, which helps to develop the map further. Yeah. And then on the totally. other side, um, Trent Hergenreider brought up the fact that any world that only has one story in it is a world with plot holes, essentially. Yeah. Um, your world should feel like a place that you can have multiple stories. So I love the fact that, you know, you say in this combined approach that you walk through the world and imagine the stories of the people who live there. Suddenly, yeah. that's a great way through a block, you know? It is. It's a great way to, um, if you put yourself in, was, so I guess first, a world should be big, right? Like there should be a lot going on um, and it shouldn't all be focused on, find the one ring, you know, right, the um, protagonist, essentially. Right. So there are things going on everywhere that are important to people that other people in other places don't know about. Right. So like I can drop myself in, for example, like this little corner in my map in Taros called the, um, the Stormlands. Right. And I can just kind of imagine what's going on there and explore that and develop that, maybe come back the next day and say, well, I need an article about who rules this place, what the capital is like, what the economy is like. And I can spend time there kind of developing that. I did that recently and it ended up being like a good four or five articles worth of content um, that I was able to put up. And just kind of by dropping myself as a pin in that area and just poking around and learning and mentally talking to people and, you know, Very it worked. Yeah, I think that's Very a great way to, to do it.